Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, but the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is indeed Lord. And He's over it all, and in Him we live and we move and we have our being. And we exist in this paradigm, this paradox of what we call and consider life on this earth at <clears throat> such a quote-unquote time as this, which time is now being borne out to be an illusion in and of itself as well, the more that things get unraveled, the more that things get exposed, the more that we realize that what we've been told is not true, what we've been, um, what's been shown to us and presented to us as base reality, base life, reason for existence, reason for your being by the world is in fact across the board universally a lie and a deception. And <clears throat> the powers that have been in place, which begin in the uh, in the cosmic rebellion that is comes from a Luciferic second heavens level of fallen angels and fallen demonic presences that then work with human agents. Um, well, they work within their own satanic structure that then goes down to human agents that get um, benefits in that system in order to be part of the, the design of something that steals and kills and destroys, which is the whole reason that the thief comes in John 10. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So we've got two paradigms going on simultaneously in this overarching presentation of base reality, which is not truly base reality. Um, <clears throat> so we're living in something that is not what we are presented on the surface. It's something else. And that's the reason that so many people struggle with it here because they and they try to you know they try to do the right thing they try to play along but they know um that that something's not right and as they start to question as they start to look if you seek for truth you're going to find it if you ask for truth you're going to receive it if you knock on the door of truth it's going to be open and you're going to find something now part of the path of life <clears throat> is the revelation that what, what, who Christ Jesus is, and once you know something, then you align your life with that bedrock truth. You refuse the lie, you embrace the truth, and you go forward in that which is real, that which is, which is actual reality. So, <clears throat> if you don't, then you stay away from truth. If you don't, then you affirm the lie. If you don't go with the truth, then you go with something else. And when you go with something else, it causes, it, it causes you to be fused with that lie. That lie now becomes part and parcel of who you are because you've embraced that lie. You've become one with that lie. You've been consummated with that lie. And then <clears throat> the problem is, is that a lie is also manipulation of truth. A lie and anything that is manipulated to be created must also be manipulated to be sustained. Anything done through manipulation must continually be manipulated to be sustained. You had a buddy one time tell me, we were just having a conversation, he said, Govinda, he said, I'm, I'm not smart enough to be a liar. I said, okay, well, what do you mean? He said, well, when you lie, you've always got to remember what you said last. But the truth is always true. See, when you tell the truth, the truth is always going to be true. You'll always be able to come back to that truth and, and uh, move in that truth and exist in that truth. But when you tell a lie, it continues to shift. And that shift that takes place, um, it, it, you're going to continue to have to manipulate to keep that thing going. The one reason, too, that you see the world starting to break apart is because the lies are being exposed and the manipulations, <clears throat> they're running out of ways to manipulate because they don't, they, they can't deal with it. Each time that something is exposed, that next level of exposure reveals um, and blows apart the last lie that was told. 
And because of that too, people are starting to question. People are starting to crack up. People that thought that they were covered <clears throat> by the world system, and the world system does give you a covering. It gives you a, a cover for corruption. It gives you a cover for um, your participation. You know, they, they give you a, in their system, if you have your rank and your position, they give you their get out of jail free card because you're part of the system and they take care of theirs. So <clears throat> you do the most heinous things, <clears throat> but in the end of it, there is no prosecution for corruption. There's no, there's a different set of standards, a different set of laws, a different way that the world works. The world works differently <clears throat> for the worlder. <clears throat> Excuse me. The world works differently for the worlder than it does for the child of God. They they give you a, a, a smooth path. Now, yeah, you're going to have to slave in their system, but you've got help. You've got connections. You've got people that will will send the deal your way. You have people that will say, you know, what? we don't need the best. We just need pretty good. And, you know, and, the, and they will keep it going that way until they hit the point when it doesn't work anymore, until <clears throat> you get Pharaoh in Egypt with a dream that he can't interpret, that comes to him twice. And all of the people in his court didn't have a solution. And it plagued him as the ruler of that land. That's the situation under which Joseph comes out of the dungeon and is brought up. Do you think people were happy about Joseph coming up into that position? Absolutely not. No, they, you know what they would have liked to have done to Joseph? They would have liked to have had him come into the king's court they would have shaved him, cleaned him up, put on some new clothes, given him a shower, all that stuff, taken him to the king's court. He would have interpreted the dream for the king, and then they would have put him straight back into the dungeon to die and to rot. That's what they would have done with Joseph had Pharaoh not finished the conversation. Had Pharaoh not realized in himself that there was more going on and that he would be destroyed if he didn't properly action the instruction that was being sent to him by God. See, there are those within the world that even though they're on the world side, <clears throat> they've got enough sense in themselves to realize that to that the, the children of God are the ones with the life in them. The children of God are the ones with the solutions in them. And sometimes, if you don't have that there, you don't have the solution. If you don't have that there, you don't have the interpretation. If you don't have that there, you don't know what to do. And business as usual doesn't work when the calamity comes, when the crisis comes, when the difficulty comes. Because there is no wisdom there is no knowledge, there is no understanding, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And if you don't have the fear of the Lord, if you don't have access to that, <clears throat> if you don't have access to that connection, you don't know what to do. You do not know what to do. The child of God knows what to do. The child of God has been given the instructions by the Spirit of the living God, knows what to do, and does it world does not know what to do. The world has no solution in and of itself. And as it comes apart, and as it seeks to continue on in a particular track, what it's used to do won't work for it anymore. You know, when I read the book of Revelation, so many of the things that, that happen as far as the things that destroy the life of, of those that are on the earth, is just... A lot of it is people reaping what they've sown. A lot of it is things coming back on people that have done things apart from God, apart from Him, it's dead works. Apart from Him, it's and apart from His direction, 
it only causes destruction. And you see the destruction come back on people when they've turned their back on the living God. That being the case, <clears throat> got to stay on track. Got to stay on track with what's real. Got to stay on track with what's true. And you cannot fall for the lie of the enemy. <clears throat> you can't fall for the deception which is presented to you so often. <clears throat> okay, here's something. So often, it is the fact that when people don't give completely of themselves over to the living God, when they hold something in themselves, when they seek to hold off on part of who they are, and they keep someplace aside, what the enemy does is he who searches and, and looks to see what, where that Achilles heel may be in that person, he'll present to you along those lines. And <clears throat> the enemy will utilize that weakness within you to access you. This is why when you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to go all in. you got to go 100%. You hold <clears throat> nothing back. You give completely of yourself all the way over to God, and you let Him lead and direct and you let him flood, the floodlight of the Spirit of God flood every part of your life. And let that be your reality for your time here while you're on the earth. Other than that, if, if, you, if you try to hold off on something, if you try to hold back some part, some piece of who you believe you are, some dream, some hope, some, some closed room, some secret sin, oh, there's one. You know, you keep that, that, just that place that, bring God into everything, including that, and ask Him. Invite the floodlight of the Spirit of God into every area, because if you don't, what will happen is the enemy will take advantage of that place that you withhold, and that will become a trap and a snare to you. You know, case in point, in scriptures, there's several, uh, Judas was one of them. I mean, this was somebody called by God, called to follow, given power to, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, do all kinds of things, amazing works. Years he spent at Jesus' side, but he was a thief. He used to help himself to whatever was put in the money bag. He, he had this access point within himself that was a weakness and a doorway and a gateway. And by the time that that thing had been used by the enemy, and he came to himself and realized what he had done, the damage had been done. Listen, you don't want to hold back on some place in your life, especially in this stage right now where we are and all that's taking place on the earth. You want every stage and every place and every part of your being to be 100% turned over to the living God. Love the Lord your God. What's the, the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You've got to love God with all that you are. And when you come unto Him and when you drink of that water of life, it overflows as rivers of living water flow from your belly. When you eat of the bread of life, He, he gives you... He, it, 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 you, you, you have life in you now. Now, when that overflow of the life that goes through you, now you can love your neighbor as yourself. And you can also love yourself because a lot of people don't love themselves. There is no... And, I, and I'm talking about... I'm not talking about a prideful love. I'm not talking... No, I'm talking about when you love yourself, you love... See, God has made you in His image and His likeness. All right? You've been made in the image and the likeness of the living God. And He wants, and, and you know, you can love what God has made. You, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loved you so much that He gave His own life for you. So now in the process of Him giving His own life for you, you know, what, don't you see what He fell in love with? Can't you see what 
in, inside of yourself what was precious enough for God himself to be fashioned and formed in human likeness and to be made like us and then to give his life and to shed his blood so that you could be and I could be redeemed? Do you not see what's in you that is worth loving? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, those upon these hinge all the commandments. So, you know, I think we, we're, we're in this amazing time. We're in this amazing window where things are being revealed, things are being exposed. Now, realizing that what we're presented with on the surface level is not real, is not true, is not base reality. Then, what do we do with the balance of our time and our energy and our efforts here? Because you want to, you want to complete the reason and the purpose that you came into this life in the first place. The world is, is, is set up for one thing, and it's set up to, to keep people from getting out, to keep people from escaping, to keep people from being set free. It doesn't matter to the world whether you become the CEO of a corporation or if you're a street sweeper, as long as you don't get out. It doesn't matter if you, have, if you gain all the world. Like Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain all the world yet forfeit his soul. It doesn't matter to the world if they give you the entire world if they've still got your soul. Because at the close of it, when your window's done, they still got you. And everything that you were about and everything that you consumed and used is still part of their system. So they've got that which is eternal, which is your soul, in exchange for that which is temporal and a short window. So they're happy to offer you the world. But they're also, it's a zero-sum game, and they're running out of resources to go around, so they'll give you trinkets, they'll give you bits and pieces. You get a nice car, you get this, you get that. But you don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a trap. There is no freedom in the world. And the more that people think, oh, if I just get this, if I just get that, if I get this level of wealth, if I get this level of power, if I get this level of connection, if I just get the right girl, if I just get the right guy, if I just get the right position, if I just have enough followers, all of it is empty. The only place that you'll ever find life and fulfillment is in Christ. Now, from that place of life and fulfillment, now you're in a position where you can be a blessing. Now you're in a position where you can make a decision and, and the things you do can lead to life. The things you do can make a decision. It can, can make a difference based off the decisions that you make in line and in purpose with the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. See, you, your existence takes on a whole different meaning when you realize there's no time. If there's no time, then what's your rush? If there's no time, then whose clock are you on? See, Jesus, <clears throat> he was about the Father's timing. What's amazing is that he, though he fulfilled everything in God's perfect timing, and when people go back and they look at feast days and, and uh, particular things that happened at certain windows, certain junctures, all of those things, beautiful, beautiful timing, impeccable timing, perfect timing for the 300 plus prophecies that he fulfilled, all of the things that happened and take, took place. That said, he was about his father's business. He wasn't walking around with a wristwatch on saying, okay, now's the time that I got to do this. Now's the time I got to do that. No, he just flew, he just knew to flow with the spirit of the living God and in the process of flowing with God, he was in step with God's perfect timing. Sometimes people stress out so much because of the timing of man who has no life in him apart from the living God. Rather than listening to the voice of the Spirit of the living God and letting him lead, 
him guide, him direct. There's, 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 a, 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 there's a transition that we need to move into as God's children in order to be able to walk through the time that we now live in. You've got to be able to make that transition. You've got to be able to make those steps. You know, be, you, we're in the world, but we're not of it. We're here because of God's purpose, but we're not of it. You know something I've been, I've been seeing more and more and more of is, is, you know, is just the mathematics behind the base reality that we live in, that we consider base reality. I mean, you can, you can look up and you can check out things like the Fibonacci sequence, you know, <clears throat> just amazing. That's where you get this uh, golden spiral, which is the kind of these ratios that you'll see, and you'll see them in nature, you'll see them in a wave, you'll see them in the, in the way that your ear is structured or your hand is structured. Um, it's, just, it's just incredible where all this stuff is and where it's coming from and what it is. And God is in it. You know, God is in the design, but also you start to realize that, that there's some things that are undercurrents of all of this that we consider reality. Now, if this whole thing is a game, a simulation, something that, that we have come into and that we are here for, you've got one life, and once you're done with your life, then that's it, and you're out of here. Okay, if this is a simulation and a game and uh, a transitional reality, then what are some things that you want to be able to know, to do, to be mindful of? Because the world obviously has its own agenda and obviously will take you on another track and away from it because it's designed to keep you from, from fulfilling the reason and the purpose that you're here. Well, one thing you want to do is you want to know what the objective is of your time here. Wouldn't you like to know that? I mean, Jesus spent his early years in the temple reading the scriptures, you know, asking questions, talking to these guys. He knew, he knew who he was. You know, when he went into the temple right, right after the baptism, uh, right after he got back, um, after his time in the wilderness, he was baptized, went into the wilderness, tempted of the devil, all of those things. When he went into the temple and he, he pulled out the scroll, read the scroll, he said, you know, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He knew who he was. He knew from God's perspective who he was. And he also knew the reason and the purpose that he was here for. He never lost sight of that. You and I cannot lose sight of the reason and the purpose that God has us here for. Because if you lose sight of it, then you go another way. And then your window is, is frettered away in foolishness. Listen, if you want to save some time, just go read the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. He tried it all. Solomon tried everything. Said, and as he tried everything that there was to do under the sun, meaningless, meaningless. It's all meaningless. Vanity, vanity. So it's it, the worthless pursuits. The only thing that he saw that was worth anything Fear the Lord and keep His commandments, because this is the whole duty of man. Because God will bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You, you don't want to waste your window here. But you want to know who you are. That's a, that's a starting point. You had, one of the things that you want to do on your transition out of this place is you want to be, you want your soul to be intact. You want to be in possession of your soul and one in Christ. You don't want the enemy to scalp your soul, to leave this life without who you being who you are, the enemy having that piece of you. No, you don't want that. 
You, you want to be able to transition out of this life and this reality God's way, God's time, God's purpose. And God wants us to exit. He also has works for us to do while we're here. Different people were given different things. You see God setting up Peter to be uh, the messenger to the Jews during the day. Paul being the one that was set up to go preach to the Gentiles. They were given empowering. They were given a mandate to do so. God gave them work to do. Jesus came to pay the price on the cross for the sins of the whole world, to die and to rise again as the first fruits. You know, God did that. Now, that being the case, God doing these things and also showing that different people were given different responsibilities and different tasks. Well, what is your task? What is the thing that God has for you to do while you're here? What's the mission that God has for your life? Your life. You. You as an individual. You as a human being. You as an intact Called one. Moses called, burning bush called. Commissioned at 80. Go, set my people free. <coughs> what is your role? Your assignment of God? Newsflash. It is not your membership at a church. At a building. There's such a deception in that. It's not your participation in that building project, that's not what we're asking. What does God have for you to do? Who has God made you? Because if you don't know what that is, and if that's not been revealed to you, if that's been kept from you, then you're missing that purpose for your existence. You don't want to miss the purpose of your existence. See, when, when you know what you're called to do, it, it just it puts something else in your spirit. It puts something else in your heart. It puts something else in the things you do and the reasons that you do what you do. Your motivation changes. Your thought process changes. So God wants you to move in the things that he's called you to do. He does have a work for you. But that work comes from Him. Did you notice that? That Jesus gave people their assignments specifically, and He gave them to them? You know, to Peter, hey, who do you say that I am? Or who, do, who do people say that I am? Okay, who do you say that I am? You know, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, okay, this revelation, upon this revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. Gates of hell won't prevail against it. You know, that's that. So he's the revelation of who Christ is. That's the church of the living God is built upon that. And Peter, you got keys. And what would those keys be used to do? Well, they were used to open up the message of the gospel at Cornelius' house to the Gentiles, which had before time been locked out, kept away. God used it and used Peter, used the situation at hand to continue to move forward in his plan and purpose. And Peter had been given an assignment. Paul, given an assignment on the Damascus Road, given an assignment when the scales fell from his eyes, given an assignment. Jesus Christ will speak to you, to you directly, and give you your assignment. But you've got to want the truth. You have to want the truth. If you want to lie, you're not going to find the truth. If you want something else, you're not going to find the truth. Ah, The enemy works very hard to keep you and I away from that with distractions, with temptations, with 
pleasures and and all the cares of this life and all the cares of this world. The enemy works, works, works hard to keep you away from fulfilling the purpose and the plan that God has for you. Because if you do the thing that God has for you, then that destroys the works of the devil because for this reason the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So God wants to destroy the works of the devil and he does it with and through us. Now, what will you do with this? What will you do with this information? Will you seek first the kingdom? Will you seek God? Will you ask Him to reveal and to show you? Or, and, and, and you know, one time I heard a, a guy tell me this in, while I was traveling in India. He said, most people want to know the will of God for their life so that they can consider it, not so that they can actually do it. You know, this, this is not about our curiosity. Okay, this is about life. This is about life. This is about truth. This is about what's real. This is about what's necessary. This is about who you are. And your soul, my soul, the souls of the people around us, this is about what's real and what's true. Will you, for the sake of humanity, be who God made you to be? For the sake of the one that redeemed you and him wanting you to be a, a co-heir in Christ Jesus, um, to be a participant in the things that God would have to happen and to take place on the earth at such a time as this, would you do that? Or do you just want to consider from the sidelines and think about how nice it would be? No, God wants you to move in truth. He wants you to move in what's real. He wants you to trust Him and He wants you to go forward in what's real and what's true. You got to know that there's power that God has put in you to tear down every work of the enemy. Here's another part of this whole thing too, okay? All right, so you want to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You want to know God's plan and purpose for you. Now, another thing. When you know and you recognize that this base reality is not real, that it's a game, it's a simulation, it is, a, it is something else besides what the world presents to you, then think about this too. How many games are out there that if you know and you understand the game, there's also workarounds in most games? You know, there's there's so many. Okay, for example, with you know, a long time ago, I used to play some computer games. Occasionally, if you knew if you had certain codes for playing certain games, all of a sudden you could access different levels. You could do different things. You could you could rack up your your superpowers for your characters very easily if you knew the codes. If you knew what the codes were, you could you could cut through so many different things. Now, where are those where are those fast tracks? Where are those things that help you to jump forward? Where are those things that that in this game in this simulation? I'll wait. Where are they? They're in the scriptures. They're in the scriptures. There you go. There we go. So when God says, for example, if you want to access a code, well, here's one. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, if you seek first him, then all these things shall be added to you. All these things being the needs that you have, that God will take care of it. So there's a code right there. So if it's the case, if you're wondering how you're going to feed and clothe the character that you are, in this time and window that you're here, while well, you seek first the kingdom of God for all of your days, and you know that He's going to take care of the needs that you, the natural, physical needs that you have. And you'll do that in an, in an amazing way. Not just in a getting by way, in an amazing way, God does that. 
You know, he doesn't make, God don't make no junk, right? Okay, so, so there's one. Well, here's another one. Jesus said, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations. You know, he tells us to go. And he tells us he's got the power. And, and because he's got the power in Jesus' name, you have the power too. To do what? To heal the sick. To raise the dead. To cast out the demon. To cleanse the leper. To do incredible works and exploits in Jesus' name. You have the power. You. So there's one. When was the last time that you took the chance when God quickened you in your spirit to pray for something and you prayed? Or did you ignore it when God nudged you? See, you want, you want to, when God nudges you to do something, you want to move in the thing that God has given you to do and know that when He's given you something to do that there's His Spirit is involved in that. And there's a larger purpose at work. You want to be able to move in the Spirit of the living God and to do the thing that God gives you to do. So we know and we understand that God has given us ways to overcome. Ways to overcome in this simulation, in this challenge, in this thing that we have found ourselves in. He's given us, he's given us the access. He's given us the codes that we need to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You know that the, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, they're spiritual in Christ. Powerful for the tearing down of strongholds. You know that. Why not use it? Why not use what God's given you? Why not get into that word and read and pray and let God lead and guide and direct your life and your time here? In doing so, you'll see the glory of God in your own life. You'll see God glorified in and through you. And you will be part of what God uses to destroy the works of the devil and to tear down his kingdom. Because God is, is doing a work. And the larger work that he's doing, nothing is going to stop that. But he gives us the opportunity to be part of what he's doing. Gives us the opportunity to be in step with him. Gives us the opportunity to walk with Him in the journey of this world. You know, it's it's this this whole thing that we find ourselves in the middle of is actually a, it's a masterstroke of creation. It really is. I mean, if you can if you can separate, just step back for a second from the horror of all of this. And just realize what it took for both light and dark to exist in the same plane, on the same paradigm, for a purpose. Because, you know, like God said, what, what, um, you know, what does, what does God and, and, uh, and Bilal have in common? What does, you know, you can't serve both God and mammon. You, you're going to, there's a separation, right? Okay. Oil and water. Separation. But, for some reason, by God's design and allowing for it to be, the wheat and the tares grow together. This is the only place you will find this. This is the only opportunity that you have to experience this. In all the universe, this is the only place that you can experience this. Light and dark, good and evil in the same paradigm, same para paradigm, same space. Now God has set this up like this for a reason and a purpose. So let him explain your, your role in the middle of this and the thing that he has for you to do in the midst of all of this because listen you're necessary you're needed god needs us to carry out the purposes that he has for us to do cuz he's glorified in that he's glorified in that when we trust him and we follow him he's glorified in the 
reality of what that turns into, of what ends up happening. Against all odds, we prevail. Against all attacks, we come out victorious. He loves it. And he does want, and in his own way need, people that will trust him and showcase what happens when somebody goes forward with that which is real and true and trusts the living God amidst all the persecution and amidst all the the traps and tricks of the devil and all the snares of the enemy and all the things that are there that God wants to show himself above all. So it is amazing. It's an amazing time. It's an amazing time for us to be on the Lord's side. Sometimes people are always trying to say, no, God's on my side, God's on this side. No, you want to be on God's side. So you want to find out what God is doing and align with Him. It's not Him coming to help you. It's you lining up with Him and taking your orders from the King of Kings. Because He's the one that's in control, not you. He's the one that knows what's going on, not you. We only know in part. We only prophesy in part. The God that knows everything, knows all things, you know, through Him, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So, you want to be able to move in that. <clears throat> so, in the process of, of, of what we're in the middle of right now, in the process of, of, of what's coming to the surface right now, You want to make sure that you know the reason and the purpose for your existence on the earth. You want to be intact. You want to be a whole being. Made complete in Christ Jesus. You want to finish your time and your race here. Run the good race. Fight the good fight of faith. And know that you've been given the power to do so in Christ. Move in that. Move in the truth. Move in the reality of who God's made you to be. Know that you have been given the victory in Christ. Don't believe the lie of the devil because the enemy's all he's got is lies and deception. That that which he has, he has had to usurp and steal from, from that which has life. He's only been able to create a system of, of lies and deception, but he doesn't have any truth in him. You want to move in the truth. Move in the truth. The truth will set you free. Walk in that which is real. And just know that we love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. You can say hi to us there. Um, Keep on keeping on. We love you guys. And um, yeah, I always look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. We'll talk to you again sometime very, very, very soon. So all right. Love you guys. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.